So for more on the search for a vaccine and uh, all of this, I'm joined by Simon Clark, who is Associate Professor of Cellular Microbiology at the University of Reading in the UK. And so work on a vaccine is well underway. There are trials currently taking place in animals, but the crucial thing will be when the process moves to a human testing. Do you, will that be a straightforward process? Will there be a take up for test cases, for example? Well, assuming that uh, the, the animal uh, experiments, the animal studies give positive results, though, that's when they will move into to, uh, to humans. And there will be a number of ways of doing that. They could uh, immunise a mass population, particularly while they're under challenge from um, the coronavirus circulating naturally in the community and see how many people get it as opposed to uh, a, a group that are, are treated perhaps with a placebo. Or they can experimentally infect people, which is, I think, what you were suggesting with the $4,000 payment, um, where people will be uh, uh, infected experimentally with a uh, coronavirus. And it will, they will then see whether those, one of those vaccines protects against that experimental infection. I know you've said that pharmaceutical labs and, and companies don't like giving a running commentary on their data, on, on how things are progressing. But I suppose if there are mutated strains of this virus, then some vaccines might not work or, or perhaps multiple vaccines will have to be developed? Well, quite. Um, they don't like to give running commentaries because if they get it wrong, they end up with egg on their face. They could be accused of trying to manipulate their share prices. They will update their shareholders um, as things go along. That, that's only natural. But you're quite right. There is the possibility that this fact, this uh, virus will mutate, that it will change, and that we'll end up having to have different versions as time goes on of, of a vaccine towards what is essentially uh, this virus. That's essentially what we see every year with a flu vaccine, so it's not without precedence. So from what you know so far uh, about the testing, who, I mean, whereabouts in the world do you think, because there is quite a race on now to find a vaccine for this, uh, where do you think or who do you think will be the first to come up with it? It's impossible to say. You said there are about 20 different vaccines being trialled. Each one of those will have their pet molecules, their pet way of doing things, their pet way of carrying out studies. <clears throat> but I suppose in terms, of, in terms of where research is quite strong and investment robust, whereabouts in the world would you be watching for serious progress on this? expect it to be in North America or Europe. But given what this is, you might expect a stronger performance from uh, pharmaceutical companies, particularly in China, but in other parts of Asia as well, like South Korea and Japan. And if and when we reach a point where a vaccine is found, then there comes the challenge of uh, distribution and scaling up. Exactly. They've got to be able to produce enough of it and distribute it easily enough. And it's also got to be protected for uh, a sufficient length of time. It's no use giving people a vaccine that only gives them a short-lived, very transient immunity. Does that mean that we're unlikely to get any results to stem to stem the current outbreak. So we're likely to see multiple waves of this. You know, there's been talk of uh, numbers rising, of there being a peak, and then perhaps it'll slow down in the summer. But if we're not likely to see a vaccine until early next year, we'll get um, perhaps hit by another outbreak then in the winter. It's entirely possible that this will come in waves. We've seen that with other similar sorts of things. Um, and, and yes, I think it's in uh, there is little or no chance of us having a vaccine that will take on this current outbreak. But of course, then <clears throat> there may be something along in the pipeline for future outbreaks. All right. Thank you very much. Simon Clark, Associate Professor in Cellular Microbiology at the University of Reading.